Good morning. In the last lecture, we were talking about how to get an idea of the weight of the airplane you are going to design. Typically, if we start thinking in terms of, let us say, passenger aircraft and we decide maybe 100 passengers, 200 passengers, we have an idea what sort of a range I want, what sort of a speed I want. If you have got few parameters as customer's requirement, then today's scenario, you immediately see the database. We try to select a baseline aircraft whose performance parameters are almost like whatever you are looking for. Generally, what happens for any new design, you try to add some new aspects to that new design. But overall, requirements based on mission requirements, you will find some aircraft already in is existing which is closer to what requirement we have. Because lots of designs are available, lots of airplanes are available, they are flying. There is no point in reinventing wheel. And please understand, for aircraft, if I talk about material, there is so much development in material. And that impacts the strength to weight ratio. There are sensors, there is a huge development in sensors. So you will find over a period of time, dynamically, there is a change in the overall configuration of an airplane vis-a-vis -vis its material property, vis-a-vis -vis its sensor capability. So, since all these data are available, which are result of lot of work done by generation after generation, it is always wise to look for a baseline airplane to get a rough idea what will be the weight. Just to give you an example, if you are planning for a four-seater or a five-seater low-speed airplane, which is like a business propeller driven airplane, then immediately we think of maybe Cessna 206, Piper, Saratoga, all this class you get an idea the weight will be around 1500 to 1600 kgs. Right? If you are talking about bigger aircraft, you have to see if, whether it is close to a 319, 320 or Boeing. Immediately you have got the weight and basic parameters available. Right? So the whole point what we are contesting is, once we have got a mission requirement, you can always find out some baseline airplane. And in baseline airplane, one of the pri primary parameter which you look for is what is the weight of that airplane and why weight is important. You know, when I say weight, then I know thrust equal to drag, lift equal to weight. After all, from ground to air I am flying, so there is a requirement of lift and lift, will, lift requirement will be more as the weight increases. So, weight decides what sort of lift I need to generate and lift means it is function of density of the air, the speed, the wing area. So, all these things get connected to weight. Right? Similarly, if you see drag, drag has a component with C L square. Right? So, in, in a very simplistic term, the lift is more drag also will have its more contribution. And since weight increment results in more lift, so I can always assume that will also 
make ourselves to look for more thrust and more power to overcome the drag or drag related power. So, finally you find weight gets linked to everything which is rightly true also without going into all this equation after all you are going to lift something. So, more weight means more lift, more effort right. So, that is why weight is extremely important and we will be now asking ourselves how do I get initial estimate of the weight knowing very well through a baseline approach if I select a baseline aircraft I will have rough idea about the weight class I am talking about. What is the method routinely we follow to get a hang, hang of what is the weight we are looking for. Then when I talk about the weight this weight is what? What I am talking about weight is take off weight that is gross weight. What it is composed of? It will have weight crew member, weight payload, then weight fuel and weight empty. So, this has been broken up very smartly into these four categories. What is the first one? The crew member. Crew member weight we always will know, it is a human weight and there are aviation standards and you have to follow that, that when you design an aircraft of particular type you have to take weight of the human being to be 75 kg or 100 kg depending upon the regulations. Then payload also we know because whether it is a passenger, whether it is a cargo, we know a priori. If it is a 200 seater, so I know uh, average weight of 1 person, I will add those, I know how much baggage we, I will allow to, them to carry. So, this W crew and W payload, they are in our hand, we know a priori, right? No, let us say. So, life is not that difficult. Now, come back here, the third one is the fuel weight. How much fuel I should carry? How much fuel is required? Who will decide that? Natural question comes, how far you want to go? At what speed you want to go? How much time you want to loiter? All these things will decide how much fuel is required because for every operation fuel will be consumed during taxiing, acceleration, takeoff, climb, cruise, loiter, landing, sometime combat. All these things are necessitated by power delivered by the engine and which is at the cost of fuel being burnt. So, if I want to have an idea about fuel, I need to know what is the mission profile. This is extremely important. It is as simple as this, if you are driving a car and if from Kanpur, if you want to go to Delhi, how much fuel you should carry in your fuel tank, who decides that? First thing I need to know what is the distance from Kanpur to Delhi, the road distance and what is the fuel consumption rate of the car. Also you know that we need to also know how is the road condition, why that is important? Because we know that there is a particular speed at which fuel consumption is minimum. When the question comes whether I will be able to drive my car meeting those requirements or not because road condition, traffic condition may not be what I am thinking to have an optimal speed. So, all these things will be considered then you say ok, I will have 30 liters, 40 liters, 50 liters and if it is not sufficient how do you plan? You plan for a refueling, you plan that ok after this many distance nearest fuel pump or petrol pump oil fill my car. These are all mission. 
Similarly, for an aircraft also, we have to have some mission profile. What this airplane is going to do? And that will primarily decide weight of fuel, but it is just not mission profile. We will understand the mission profile you have to visualize through the weight of the airplane. Because we have seen as weight increases, drag increases, power increases, and the naturally your fuel requirement will also increase. So, there will be a, a separate approach for estimating W fuel and this one W e which is W m t that has been also added separately for simple reason that W m t means it is more driven by your structural design, what material you have used, what sort of stress relieving structure you have and those will uh, those things will decide what is the empty weight. Okay. Again you will find this empty weight will also be somehow I can link to W naught maybe linearly proportional based on the statistical data. Right. These are all initial statistical data driven inferences which will be used to get the first parameter for a conceptual design. Now, I come back here again. So, I write W naught equal to W q plus W k load plus W fuel plus W empty and this I can write W f with the assumption that I will be working more with the fraction of gross weight and W e also I will model at W e by W naught into W naught. Please understand this approach. Here we are trying to find out how much percentage of the gross weight is the fuel weight, how much percentage of gross weight is the empty weight and then I multiply with W naught to get fuel consumption rate. This is purely based on the statistical data that makes life simpler. Okay. If I substitute this here then I can write you can do yourself W naught equal to W q plus W k load by 1 minus W f by W naught minus W e by W naught. Keep this back of your mind, we will see how to use this. Well, let me write this expression here because we will be using this W naught equal to W q plus W payload divided by 1 minus W f by W naught minus W e by W naught. We will first discuss about W e by W naught that is empty weight fraction and these are estimated using I told you using historical data. Please understand all these efforts are to get the initial uh, numbers for the design to start the design conceptual design. Generally you will find from the historical data this W e by W naught vary from 0.3 to 0 0.7 and another important observation is that it diminishes with increase in W naught. What is W naught? So far I am taking W naught, W naught, W naught is the gross weight, everything included, right? Just to give you an example, 
a historical data representation. Typically, if I take this is 0 0.7, some it is 0 0.5, and I am just trying to give a qualitative representation of a jet transport, a jet transport. And here, this will be around. So, uh, so, if we are designing a jet transport airplane, then depending upon what weight class you want to design, you can get roughly what is W e by W naught. This is this. You can focus on figure, which is empty weight fraction trains. You could see that for sail plane powered, for 1000 pound, this W e by W naught is around 0 0.65. Again, if you go further, you find for a jet trainer, for a 10,000 pound, for a jet trainer, it is around 0 0.65 to 0.62. Focus on military cargo bomber weighing around 1 lakh pounds, the W e by W naught can vary between 0 0.45 to 0.1. So, this figure empty weight fraction train, which is based on historical data is a guideline for you. Okay. Based on whatever figure you have seen, the author has done a good work in giving us a correlation where it is written A into W naught C into K V S where you could easily see W naught is the gross weight and C and A are the constants, they vary for different type of configurations. For example, for a sail plane, for a sail plane unpowered, A value is 0.86 and C is minus 0 0.05 and for a jet transport A is 1.02 and this is minus 0 0.06. What is interesting to note here that the C is negative that is exactly I was telling as W naught increases, W e by W naught decreases. That you should be very, very clear, even it was shown here as well. But you can use this correlation. But only my request is use FPS unit, FPS unit. Because all this calibration chart which I am using from uh, book aircraft design by Raymer all details I will be giving you, they are available with me in FPS unit. So, I will strongly advise you, you use FPS unit unless and otherwise I give you those calibrations or those correlations in MKS. The new book of Raymer does give equivalent MKS constants, but I will be using FPS units. right? You can refer this empty weight fraction versus W naught and you could see that for cell plane unpowered value of A is 0.86, C is minus 0 0.05. For a general aviation single engine, it is 2.36 is the value of A and minus 0.18 is value of C. For a jet trainer, it is 1.59 and minus 0 0.10. Like this, these values have been generated using the historical data using the figure which was shown earlier, right? And that is a huge work. Just to repeat, this correlation, uh, this empirical relation is derived using all the historical data and it for a designer is very handy. Okay. You can even, even write your own code uh, using a lookup table and get these numbers easily. But as a designer, you must understand that W by W naught 
if it is between 0.3 to 0.4 around this that's a good one for weight class of around 1 lakh pound or it is less than that then what is kvs this kvs factor you see because there is a change in the material from metal to composites and then uh, there has to be some reduction in the weight and this value could be somewhere around 0.85 that is 15 percent reduction i generally take 10 percent reduction at the initial stage or sometime i may take it as one okay because i don't know initially how many components i'll be making using composites so do not give too much of weightage on that to have an initial design we take around one right okay and as you grow you will develop a feel and then you can play around with that so once we by w naught is over our next attempt is wf by w naught that is the fuel fraction now if i write fuel fraction estimation I need to be clear about number one mission fuel I need to be clear about reserve fuel and also third one trapped fuel It's very clear when you talk about mission fuel, the fuel required to complete the whole mission from takeoff to landing back, right? What is reserve fuel? That when you are going for a mission, you need to keep something reserved because of so many emergencies, contingencies. So you can think like this, okay, I should have 30 minutes extra fuel or I should plan reserve fuel based on the nearest airport where I can be diverted based on the contingencies. So that sort of a planning you have to do and the trapped fuel is some fuel which you cannot take it out from the fuel tank. So all these things you have to cater for. Because when you are flying a machine Please remember safety is the utmost criteria. You should not starve because of fuel and meet the um, ultimate conclusion. So we have to be careful about these things and no a priori. We will be focusing more on mission fuel, how to systematically calculate that. A reserve fuel and trapped fuel, they again come back by experience, what sort of planning you have got it may be around 6 to 7 percent depending upon the situation okay Th those also we will highlight but more importantly now we will talk about mission fuel then what is the mission if I am talking about mission fuel what is the mission for example I give you example if I am going from Kanpur to Delhi how much fuel I should carry I should know from what which point to which point I am going and what I am doing in between right what sort of a speed I will be flying how many times I will switch off the car and start all these issues will come right and how is the road conditions so mission fuel when I am trying to look for I need to know what are the possible missions and I will now talk very generic mission one what I will be talking about is simple cruise what is that you know you start from here climb cruise do a loiter and land it is climb cruise loiter and land that is I am going from here let us say from Kanpur I am gaining a height around 8 kilometer cruising and then I come near the Delhi airport loiter get the air traffic clearance and land. 
So from one point to another point I am going. But please understand, if I am designing a military aircraft, the situation may not be always this because I take off from here, did the job and I come back to the base. This is one possibility. The other possibility is I do the mission then go to the another base. So the mission profile will change even if it is a simple cruise, right? It is like for transport aircraft, general aviation design. What is the main aim for such aircraft is basically required range. That is the foremost aim. At what speed etc etc will follow, but main aim is I have to move from one point to another point. No other primary issues, right? So these are covered under the mission or simple cruise mission. Like our general aviation, Cessna, Saratoga, they belong to this. You take off from here, go to Lucknow and land. Right? The mission two, that could be air, I am now going towards air superiority. Right? Now you can see that from civil, we are not talking about little military, okay? And such mission requirements demands that the airplane takes off, climb to an altitude, cruise, comes back, do a combat, drop bomb, weapon, anything, goes up, loiter, and land. Do you see this mission here? It takes off from here, goes to a cruise altitude, dives, right? We can cruise and then do some sort of a combat, drop weapon, whatever it is, and again goes altitude, goes and loiter and land. Please understand, assume that the aircraft is having a jet engine, right? The jet engine efficiency will depend upon the altitude flying, the speed, the temperature, right? Now for a military air type aircraft, you do not have option. If you want to do a low altitude combat or some altitude combat, you have to be there. That did not be your right type of condition for the fuel efficiency. So fuel consumption will change. Here some weapon drop will be there or when you do a combat, lot of high acceleration may happen. So fuel consumption here will be altogether different. So it's in this area may not be a very highly uh, fuel efficient domain. So fuel consumption will be more. Then you have to cruise out and then loiter and land, right? So that way when I want to calculate the fuel fraction WF by W0, I need to know what are the mission requirement, what the operation is going to do, right? Here, it is not that fuel efficient operation. Right? Sometimes after charger may be used, extra fuel may be pumped in. So I need to know all these things before I know how much fuel is required. So I need to calculate WF by W0 taking this sort of a mission if I am planning for a air superiority aircraft, which is different from simple cruise type aircraft. Okay. The third category, so before I uh, uh, come to third category, for air superiority mission, we have one is cruise out, these are the primary maneuver, cruise out one, second is combat which we have seen, third one is weapon drop. And fourth, second cruise, because aircraft must return to the base. That is when I am going like this, 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 I do something here, go this, and I need to come back to the base. It is not for 
landing at different other bases. Where from you have taken off, you come back there. So whatever range you have gone, if you want to estimate how much fuel is required from A point A to point B, whatever range you have covered, you have to ensure that you have to come back same another distance, almost same distance. Maybe flight conditions are different because while return you are not doing combat, right? So we sometimes what we do, whatever cruise distance is there, we duplicate that to ensure that this part is used to compute the fuel consumption for return flight. This is air superiority. Then we have, oh, this is another important. I am giving military example, but please understand we do not advocate war, right? Okay, but same time we should be enough prepared if somebody hits below our belt, we should be able to retaliate. Right? But all these lectures are primarily for to give you understanding what are the technologies involved, what are the methods involved. We do not forget most of the civilian uh, things which you are using, they are actually product of military technologies. Okay? No, because mil military technology, the quality assurance is pretty high and uh, at an adverse condition you design things. Okay, so third one I will talk about is low level strike mission. The low level strike, the word which is being stressed is low level, that you want to avoid radar signature, you want to be very clear, see what you want to see. So you have to fly at a very low altitude. The moment you want to fly at low altitude, you, it, that may not be at all aerodynamically very efficient uh, profile. This low level means 50 feet, 100 feet, let us say 100 feet, 150 feet, 200 feet, we are talking about those distances, right? Because it is a strike mission, you see a strike and come back, right? But at the same time avoid capture by radar. So what are the criteria there? It is, well, let me draw the first profile, it is again almost similar to look loiter, then come to 50 or 100 do whatever you want to do, cruise and here the condition is A must be flown a just few hundreds feet of the ground. This is to improve survivability that is avoid radar and also it helps in locating the target. What is the problem? Problem is L by D goes down, engine efficiency goes down and it is a high speed flight. You can imagine at low altitude you want to do high speed. So how much fuel will be consumed? L by D is low, engine performance is low, you want high speed. Many times it happens, the amount of fuel which you consume here, that may be almost equal to the amount of fuel you consume here. So such mission profile when you want to calculate fuel fraction, you have to give a due weightage here. Okay, most of the fuel will be consumed here, right. And the last one which we will be talking about is strategic. bombing, I wanted to omit this because I did not like the word bombing, but then you should know it, the reality is it has a new technology, so it is very important you should know this. What is this again same start from here cruise to altitude not very high altitude come down 
and this R means refueling, right? So you get the aircraft refueled here by another aircraft. Again, you cruise out, then come back to around thousand feet, maybe, and then do whatever drop operations. Again, you cruise. Now you land at some other base. Not you are coming back to the original base. Right, you took off from Delhi and landed somewhere in Ahmedabad or somewhere else. It's not you are coming back to the base. Right. This is important. Please understand. Many times in operation, what happens? You are carrying aircraft bomb. And from the base, you have taken off, but for some reason, you could not release the bomb. So it is not advisable that that airplane lands back to the same base because if there is an accident, it may create a problem. So there are many such things happen whether it is this type or not. So even if it is supposed to come back to the base, depending on the situation, it may be advisable that you land somewhere else, right? But for a strategic bombing mission, this is very the important part is the refueling, so that you can have an extended range. So you can understand refueling I am doing that means I am going for a longer mission. So there is no point in coming back and land back here. Better I land back nearest to that, which is not the criteria. Other low level strike mission basically you are coming back to the base, right? So you can very well understand that if you want to really calculate the fuel consumption for this, and if you follow simple cruise method, you will not get because there are huge things are happening. Okay, so all these things need to be known before we try to follow the methods which are listed. What we will do? We will take simple example of a cruise mission and a loiter mission. If you know cruise and loiter for that segment, that concept you can apply everywhere here. Yeah. Basically, it has two primary operation one is cruise, one is loiter, and there will be something called acceleration phase, dive phase, which will be added, but primarily cruise and loiter. That is why primarily range and endurance. Once you have identified mission requirements, to ensure that whether we can use this mission requirement to calculate fuel fraction, what we will do, our approach will be very simple. We will take an example and we will actually find out fuel fraction and empty weight fraction for a given mission requirement and that will be a simple cruise mission requirement. So, it will be like, we will be actually computing W e by W naught and W f by W naught by before that we will postulate what is the mission requirement for the airplane we are going to design and that is also a solved example from this book so that you can refer that book and learn more beyond this lecture. Okay? That will be my next part of my lecture tomorrow. Thank you very much.